Hi everybody, this is going to be a quick little video. Uh, this is my least favorite time of year as a guitarist. Living here in Oklahoma, and I also had the same experience when I lived in Alaska, uh, this is the driest time of year uh, in these particular states. And if you live in the Midwest or you live in the Northern Plains or up in Alaska, this time of year sucks. And then some people have to put up with this kind of climate uh, year round, like if you live in Arizona. And uh, one of the things that you might consider having to to do is to uh, use a humidifier. Let's see if I can reposition myself here where you can see my humidifier. There it is down there on the floor. This little thingy there, there it is. Go through about one bucket of water in there a day to try to keep everything uh, hydrated uh, in the room here. One of the things that you run into is that your uh, guitars, when the weather gets really, really dry, is that the top on the guitar acoustic guitars, in particular, not electric guitars, they will flatten out. And you're going like, what, well, isn't it a flat top guitar already? No, all your guitars, they all have a slight bit of what's called crowning. There's a very slight, almost imperceptible kind of arch to the top of the guitar uh, as part of the bracing and everything else. And then what ends up happening is when uh, the, it gets the normal humidity, it maintains that arch, but when it dries out, it flattens out a little bit. And everything kind of contracts, fingerboards contract, the uh, top contracts, it's a pain in the butt. So if you have an inexpensive guitar, you may end up with a guitar, well, I've even seen it with some expensive guitars too. Let me put that in there. You can end up with a, a, a guitar where all of a sudden you've got sharp fret ends uh, up and down the neck. And that happens uh, because the, the fingerboard has contracted a bit. You need to put these sharp fret ends out the, the, the end of the guitar. Uh, on some guitars, you can have problems with different types of woods expanding and contracting, like if you have an ebony fingerboard on a maple neck, they expand and contract at different rates, and it can cause twisting of your neck. Uh, properly seasoned woods, you figure, would really uh, uh, go a long way to, to stop this, but even then, I mean, the guitars, it's like a living thing. It responds to the weather. Uh, my guitars that do the, the best are my ovations. They seem to be the toughest, the most roadworthy, and they handle the climate changes better than, than most. But other instruments we've got here, like only the electrics are really immune to it. And even then you can feel it in the fingerboards. Uh, during this time of year, what are some of the things you can do? Well, you can humidify your guitars. If you have uh, just uh, one, uh, uh, one guitar, you can just get a humidifier that you can put down into the sound hole, and that can uh, help a little bit to keep uh, keep your guitar humidified but if you've got multiple guitars like i've got like about 20 of them in here if uh, if if they get uh where they need humidification you got to humidify the room uh, the optimum is about 45 to 55 percent uh humidity so if you have a high grommeter you can put in your house you can kind of monitor the humidity in your room where you keep your instruments some people will keep them in the case year around i've never liked keeping guitars in cases because then it's a hassle to go get it. And when the, the muse strikes and you want to practice, you could need to go right to it right then without any steps between uh, you and the guitar. And so humidifying a room can help, uh, but it's, a, it's still it's a, it's a struggle. One of the things with ultrasonic sonic, ultra sonic humidifiers, like what I've got here, is that they will put out a fine little powder. Uh, it's like a little bit of dust that gets on your instruments and you have to clean them and polish them more often uh, during the, the this particular season when you're using the humidifier. Uh, fingerboards, is a good time to condition your fingerboards with a little bit of a lemon oil or a fingerboard conditioner. Uh, polish them up, uh, get the fingerboards uh, so that they uh, stay hydrated. I guess you wanna call it really not hydrated, they're eliminated and uh, and keep those so that they will play well. And then finally, uh, blessed spring comes around again and we start to get normal humidity and things start to go normal. One thing I have a video on on the channel uh, about is that one of the tricks I do is uh, for some of my instruments, I have winter saddles and summer saddles. And when the top flattens out, I can put the, the winter saddle in, which is a little uh, like a, maybe a millimeter or two higher, which helps me keep the action at the optimal level because I like a really low action and something for pieces that are uh, involve a lot of uh, athleticism. I like to have that, that action as low as I can get it. And so uh, that, that helps a little bit during this particular time of year. So what do you do uh, with your guitars during this time? Uh, how do you keep your guitars playable, sounding good? Even the sound effects. I mean, I, I, I call it a dry sound because it's a, the, the, the weather kind of uh, affects the tops and the, the tonality of the guitar does change. The, and humidifiers tend to make your strings less, uh, last less long. Boy, that's a lot of alliteration in that one, isn't there? So uh, 
Yeah, drop a comment. What do you do during this time of year to keep your instruments playable, keep them sounding good? Uh, it's a struggle every year. Uh, usually now, my most recent recent years, what I tend to do is just play a lot of bass during January, February, early March. Uh, the basses don't seem to be affected by it at all. So I practice my bass a lot uh, now and uh, for the next several weeks until uh, spring decides to come back around again. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. And uh, like, subscribe, and share. See ya. Bye.